Lovely to see you again. Uh, okay, so drop all the BS and let's just have a plain conversation. Is this what this is about? That is exactly what this is about. We haven't got time for all of that waffle anymore. We've got so much information around us. We need to pair it back to get answers to questions and important things that we can understand and act on. So why is this Kopapa important to you and how long have you actually been involved with it? I've been um, involved in plain language for eight years now, running my business, running these writing trainings. And I learned because I was on my Hapu Trust Board, um, I'm Ngāti Wai from Aotea, Great Barrier Island, and someone wrote a document for us that had legal standing. It was, it was weighty, it was important and powerful. And it was written in such an easy voice that no matter what age in our hapu, we could understand. And that was eye-opening for me because I'd been a writer for decades already and I didn't know that we could do it this way. So talk us through the plain language training, because it's not um, just about the spoken and written words, right? No, um, it's very much about putting the reader in the centre of the of the process and thinking about who's actually going to read these words. And it goes with verbal communication as well. Who's going to listen to these words? Who's receiving it? And when they come to this information, what are they looking for? What questions do they have? Mm -hmm. So we've, we've talked about it for years as being reader-centric. Really, we could just call it empathy. <laughs> Yeah, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? Now, I can imagine that this would be a hard sell to many um, leaders because, you know, perhaps we believe that flash words equal authority. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's what we get trained. You know, we get raised that way. Use the big words, use the thesaurus throughout our education. But we have really clear evidence, really clear research that tells us, actually, the more big words you use, the less likely your audience is to trust you. They also maybe question whether or not you are as intelligent as you are presenting yourself to be. So um, everyday language, the kind that we're using in conversation right now, if we use that in our written documents, your audience is able to read it more quickly, understand it more quickly. It increases buy-in, it increases speed of action, and it also reduces how much litigation there is of, of lots of those documents because there's less room for interpretation. Now, obviously, COVID-19 has had a damaging effect on businesses, right? So many will have to change the way that they do things in the coming months. So what's the key to good communication? I'm really excited about the opportunity that we have now because the key to good communication is about reconnecting with if I was accessing this information, what questions would I come to it with? Now, let's write this document or present this information in a way that that's the first thing that people find. Mm. Let's not play those games where we go, well, the way to write a report is that you've got background and you've got context and you've got scope and you've got, you know, whatever those traditional sections are. Let's be really real about the way readers behave um, and make sure that they find what they need immediately. For example, a traditional report, there's quite a lot of preamble, but a reader comes to it finding, asking a question like, what are you recommending to me? Or what did you find so that I get the information? So the first thing we read should be, here's what we found. Then you wanna jump straight into, here's how we found it, here's why we're recommending you act this way, rather than the other way around, because mm. people don't read business documents like a novel. Well, it makes perfect sense to me, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but how, how, do you think that the prime, how do you think the Prime Minister's communication has been? Oh, look, she, um, there hasn't been a lot of in-depth research done into her communication style yet, but she uses um, everyday vocab that's probably, I'm guessing, around the age of about, about a 13-year-old because that's the, the level of vocab that's going to reach the widest audience, whereas Donald Trump uses um, vocab at the level of an 8-year-old, just, just by the way, and um, she uses lots of repetition and lots of just really nice, simple words that we can connect with, you know, be kind, those bubble, um, just the, the repetition of simple phrases. Going back to the work that you've done, talk us through some of the successes that you've had or some of the feedback that you've had from businesses. Oh, goodness, I didn't think about that. Um, what I find is that years after a training, people come back to me and they've been writing emails differently the entire time. For example, not an email that's full of lots and lots of text, just something that says straight up, here's what I'm asking for, or here's what I'm telling you. And then lots of headings and bullet points afterwards because readers skim read, right? So if you write an email so that it can be skim read, then it's more successful. Uh, companies where I've rewritten policy suites and they come back and tell me, actually, we've been able to keep these up to date, whereas policy suites usually get really outdated and then they need a huge overhaul. 
people have actually looked at them and understood them and, and they become more applicable, more real documents. Um, just finally, just tell us about the initiative that you've been driving for the past few months, Protect Our Whakapapa. Yeah, I'm just part of the team, definitely not, not running it. Uh, I'm part of the comms team. Protect Our Whakapapa is a grassroots collaboration that has been, uh, that just kind of jumped in as the pandemic started to say we want to make sure that Māori have really good, clear messaging that is fit for us. So it's always up to, up to date every day based on what's happening in Aotearoa and in the Rahui and making sure that we use Whakaro Māori to present those concepts in the most empowering way. And one of the strengths that we've had is plain language. Can I just say, we are so used to plain language on social media and in marketing. We are so used to it, but we don't connect the fact that when we're writing at work, we're allowed to write like that. There's a reason it works in marketing and in social media. And we just have to reconnect. Um, the Readers want things a certain way, but writers think we have to do something different. We just have to close that gap.